Well, good morning, and happy Sunday to all. Happy Sunday. Now, before we uh, begin, I would just like to introduce uh, two very special guests and friends of mine. We have Bob and Sue Rosenbaum. Bob and Sue, would you stand here? And let's just give them a nice unity welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, um, Bob is a very accomplished, uh, accomplished musician and guitarist, and he will be joining in with several of our songs this morning. I've known Sue for only about a couple of years now, but we've developed a very good uh, friendship during that time. But Bob, I've known Bob for a very, very long time. Now, some of you are going to find this hard to believe, but I first met Bob many years before the turn of the century, okay? <laughs> so that makes us both kind of ancient, right? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So let's start our day with love, peace, and joy by singing, I start my day. I start my day with love when I start my day with love. That's what I get more of is love. I start my day with love when I start my day with love. That's what I get more of is love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. I start my day with peace. When I start my day with peace, I feel that sweet release of peace. I start my day with peace. When I start my day with peace, I feel the sweet release of peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, 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 peace. I start my day with joy, when I start my day with joy, everything I do is infused with joy. I start my day with joy, when I start my day with joy, everything I do is infused with joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, 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 joy. I stop my day with love. I stop my day with peace. I stop my day with joy and feel the sweet release. I stop my day with love. I stop my day with peace. I stop my day with joy and feel the sweet release. Joy, 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 joy. Good morning and welcome to Unity of Daytona Beach. Peace, joy, and love. Let's have some scoops of that. Bring it on in. What do you think? Yeah. Thanking God for this beautiful day that we have today to be together here in person and on Facebook Live. Welcome for you in the sanctuary and welcome to everyone on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. Today's reading comes from a little book called Spirit is Calling that Reverend Teresa picked out for us today. Are you ready for this? Okay, are you sure you're ready? Because we're going to be flexible and open. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting the look because apparently I'm not loud enough, shockingly. Is that better? Did you? Oh, I'm being flexible and open. How's that? This reading has an inspirational quote from W. Clement Stone. There is little difference in people, but that little difference makes a big difference. The little difference is attitude. 
The big difference is whether it's positive or negative. Wow, huh? Yeah. Amen. The first step to a flexible and open relationship with life is to acknowledge that there are different ways of seeing the same situation. Did we know that? Without acknowledging that these different filters exist, it is practically impossible to experience openness to new understanding and wisdom. It is a beneficial exercise to try on, here's the flexible and open part, try on the point of view that is opposite to the one that you currently hold in any particular matter. Pick the thing you feel strongest about and imagine writing a newspaper article from the opposite point of view. Or imagine debating the opposite side of one of your favorite opinions. The goal is to discover, to discover if you have enough flexibility to open up to other ways of thinking without losing the integrity of your own opinion. What do you feel very strongly about? If you'll take a moment and close your eyes with me and we'll do a little prayer. Take a deep breath in. And think about something that you hold a strong opinion of. Can you see the opposite point of view? Can you be flexible and open? What would that look like? Take a deep breath in to that flexible and open. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and power, O blessed spirit. In your divine wisdom, erase our every human limitation, and from the pure substance of your love, bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law. And because we align with and cooperate with that law, and so it is. Amen. And now if you'll speak the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You are sacred love, sacred love is all that you are. You are sacred love, God, sacred love is all that you are. You are sacred love, sacred love is all that you are. You are sacred love, God. Sacred love is all that you are. Show the way, God, show the way. I want to live in such a state of grace. Lead the way, God, lead the way. I want to live in such a holy place. Such a holy place. You are blessed peace, blessed peace is all that you are. You are blessed peace, God, blessed peace is all that you are. Show the way, God, show the way. I want to live in such a state of grace. Lead the way, God, lead the way. I won't live in such a holy place, such a holy place. You are deepest joy, deepest joy is all that you are. You are deepest joy, God, 
deepest joy is all that you are. Show the way, God, show the way. I want to live in such a state of grace. Lead the way, God, lead the way. I want to live in such a holy place. Such a holy place. You are sacred love. The sacred love is all that you are. You are sacred love, God. Sacred love is all that you are. A sacred love is all that you are. A sacred love is all that you are. I was so into that beautiful song, I almost forgot to come back up. Oops. Would you speak our statement of faith with me? There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotence. Do we have, this is the time in our service when we like to welcome newcomers. We won't ask you to stand up or say anything. But if someone is new for here for the very first time, if you just raise your hand so we could give you a packet of information. Somebody over there. Welcome. We're so grateful to have you here today. We hope that something in our service really resonates with you, that you'll want to come back and be with us again. Announcements. The chaplains are back in the sanctuary, so if you do want to have a prayer after service, we just ask that you kind of wait your turn and they'll call you up. So welcome back, chaplains, into the sanctuary. Um, we do have a new YOU sponsor, Nicole, and she could probably use a little more encouragement and not encouragement, a little assistance. So if you're feeling led to volunteer with the YOU group, we would love to have you. And here we go again, the same announcement every week. Are you tired of it? We need volunteers. So when we shut down, all the volunteers had no duties, right? We need ushers. We need people to help us usher. It's really easy to do. I was an usher here many years ago, and it's great to be of service for our community. How do we feel when we get to be of service, right? It lifts us up. So let's lift up a little bit into becoming ushers. And that's all I've got. Let the light within you shine. We are all connected. Look into one another's eyes. See your light reflected. Let the light within you shine. We are all connected. Look into one another's eyes. We your light reflected. We are one light, shining souls in harmony. We are one light shining in unity. We are one light shining souls in harmony. We are one light shining in we are one light, shining souls in harmony. We are one light, shining in unity. Oh. 
let us take this time together. We are one light, shining in unity, shining here in this unity community, and shining in our community at large. So just take a breath in with me. Just close your eyes. Become comfortable where you are. And just settle in. And in our humanness, we can be very, very busy, can't we? Busy physically, busy in our thoughts, busy in our minds, but not now. In this sweet, sweet time, we choose to go inward. Just rest for a while. And continue to watch your breath. And as we take another deep breath in together and we release that breath, that <sighs> we can settle in just a little bit more. We can become a little more flexible, a little more open, and let us breathe into that openness. Release that breath. As if we just close the door on the outer condition and immerse ourselves in the presence. We simply leave our inner sanctuary door open and allow spirit to come in. Spirit's always present, simply our awareness of spirit that changes. And so we breathe into that. And we release that breath again. Settling in even a little bit more. And as we leave that inner door open and allow spirit to flourish within us, as if our entire being is filled with the light of spirit, and we set an intention to be flexible and open, to know our oneness with each other, know our oneness with our God. This is our home, this is our family, this is our community. Spirit fills us up and we say, precious spirit, what is mine to know this morning in a greater way than ever before?
And I invite you to hold the vision. One light. One love. One God. Breathe into that. Release that breath. We take this into the silence now. take another breath in together and release that breath saying precious spirit I choose flexibility I choose openness I leave my inner door open for spirit to show me the way what is mine to know and because we have asked, we know that we receive. We take another breath in. We release that breath. We come back to this place, this space, with a readiness and a willingness and expectancy of good. And so it is. Amen. Whatever I do, whatever I dream, whatever I decide to be, the answer is you. Whatever I seek, whatever the questions be, so why would I fight and why would I cry? And why would I worry still? I just open my arms and open my eyes and follow you, my God, until you are nearer to my heart and nearer to my soul, nearer to my life. Never let me go oh, nearer to my heart. Show me what to do, oh God, to be nearer to you. Oh God, to be nearer to you. Whenever I hurt, whenever I fall, Whenever I have lost my way, I know where to turn to you after all. You've seen me through my darkest days. There's no need to fight, no reason for shame. And finally fear is gone. I just open my eyes and whisper your name and understand that all along 
You are nearer to my heart, nearer to my soul, dearer to my life. Never let me go. Oh, nearer to my heart. Show me what to do, oh God, to be nearer to you. Oh, dearer to my life, never let me go. Oh, nearer to my heart, show me what to do. Oh, God, to be nearer to you. Oh, God, to be nearer to you. Ooh, good morning. <laughs> How are you this morning? I feel really loud. Am I loud? Well, some say yes, some say no. Fine. Here. Now, here's the, the last So they're back. Do you remember your first Sunday back here? That was April. I know it. It was April 11th. Their first Sunday back for them particularly. So let's give a clap for that. Yes. Thank you, Nicole Mitchell and Joy Kalis. Gratitude for Bob sharing his gifts and talents with us this morning. Special unity blessing over there and to his wife for sharing him with us. <laughs> Welcome, Bob and wife. Jen and Jeannie, gratitude for them. They spent extra time on Friday with a production specialist back there, huh? Additional training. And on Thursday, we had our sound specialist here for a mere three hours working on things for us. So lots and lots and lots of gratitude in numerous areas. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we are working tirelessly and diligently to bring and meet everybody's needs in the sanctuary and on Facebook Live so that all sound and production issues get addressed and that everybody can participate fully. So will you hold that energy with me that everybody here and out there and beyond get to participate fully because people have been having some sound issues. So I think they're all gone. So let's send some good energy out there. Let's expect good and say, good job, team. <laughs> so if you have extra, extra prayer time out there that you don't know what to do with, you just shower everybody here with them, okay? <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> so I was reading an article from Unity Headquarters, and it was written by... Elizabeth G. Howard, she's a journalist and a digital content specialist. She works on Unity Worldwide Headquarters web team. And her article was entitled, How to Survive Divisiveness and Learn to Love Everyone. Yes, she said everyone. That's what it said. See, she suggests using the golden rule and the unity, first unity principle and the middle way to re find some relief from any suffering that we may be having. So I wasn't familiar with the middle way, I thought, so it got my attention. As if the title of the article was not enough to get my attention, right? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not having any issues with divisiveness. I'm having no trouble with loving everyone. Oh, no, 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 no. That wasn't what got my attention. It was the middle way. <laughs> But it was a good thing because it piqued my interest and it got me to read the article, right? And now I'm going to share it with you. So the foundation of all of this is the golden rule that we learned in kindergarten. Treat each other the way you would like to be treated. How simple is that? <laughs> 
And are we doing that? We'll find out. In truth, this teaching comes from Jesus' teachings and the lesson that he gave from Sermon on the Mount. And Unity Minister Rev, Reverend Ed Townley said this about the metaphysical meaning of all of that, the golden rule. The golden rule is not about fixing others, but about our own actions and judgments. It suggests that judgment and condemnation do not come from God in the first place. We can get that, right? That's pretty simple. They are human consequences of human choices. What causes us to feel judged or condemned? The only thing that causes us to feel judged or condemned is our, only, our own tendency to judge and condemn others. Hmm. There's a definite cause and effect at work. It's not, do not judge, and God will cut you some slack and refrain from judging you. No. If we stop judging and condemning, we will immediately stop the rebound effect that brings back onto us some of those very same energies that we've directed out towards others. Hmm. That golden rule just got a little more complicated, didn't it? <laughs> Jesus taught, and everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. That's from Matthew chapter 7, verses 12. And I've read that scripture numerous times, but as I was preparing for this lesson, what jumped out at me in this scripture is in everything, in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. In everything, that's thought, word, and deed, right? Everything. So Howard goes on to discuss how, how to approach finding a way into the middle way. She says, Abandoning judgment of others and focusing on self, with a capital S, is a key part of the Buddhist teaching of the middle way. The self moving away from the typical dichotomy of right versus wrong. In her book, When Things Fall Apart, Buddhist nun Pema Chodron explains how when we start moving away from right versus wrong, we widen our circle of compassion. She calls it the middle way. Think about that with me for just a minute as we move forward this morning. Widening our circle of compassion. She says, we could see it as sitting on the razor's edge, not falling off to the right or to the left. The middle way involves not hanging on to our version so tightly. It involves keeping our hearts and minds open long enough to entertain the idea that when we make things wrong, we do it out of a desire to obtain ground or security. The middle way asks us to hang out in uncertainty. Oh, not big on that, are we? The mind likes to know things. It says it asks us to choose feeling and hearing other people as they really are over needing to prove one side right and one side wrong. Friends, this spoke to me so deeply. If we take a look around at what's going on in our world today, can you not see how we could apply this, practice this, and things might decide to shift a little bit? And I know that a lot of us already are. But again, we come here together every Sunday morning to remember a little bit more, don't we? Just remember a little bit more. So we have a slide now, Jeannie, for me. Slide one. So take this quote in with me from Pema Chodron. Could our minds and our hearts be big enough just to hang out in that space where we're not entirely certain about who's right and who's wrong? Could we see, hear, feel other people as they really are? Could we give permission to ourselves to be who we really are, thereby giving permission to everybody else on this planet to be who they really are? Breathe. Oh, 
We're not spiritual lightweights, are we? No, no, no. <laughs> We're big boys and girls, aren't we? That's why all this, these messages are coming to us. Which leads me right into the Rumi quote that I love so much. It's coming. Got it? Thank you. I love this one. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. It's my most favorite part of that. Then it goes on. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. We are one. And Mother Teresa's quote, please. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Take another breath with me. We belong to each other. How does that make you feel when you say that or you hear it? We belong to each other. Some of us might want to get a little resistance in there, but I'm inviting us. Remember what we said in our meditation. We're leaving that door open for spirit to come in, to be open, to be flexible. And then I also invite you, too, that if there is any resistance in any of this, you just, again, invite spirit. What is that about? What am I to know about that? Belonging. That really resonates with me. It strikes deep within me, and I thought, wow, I wonder what that's all about as I was preparing this, which is honestly how this whole lesson came into being. <coughs> now, I know you all remember the lesson from last week. <laughs> You're going, was I even here last week? Yes, a lot of you were. But anyway, last week, I invited us, I encouraged us to honor all of our divine ideas, and this is one of mine. So I thought, belonging. And then I noticed again, why is that stirring me up so? What is this? I thought, well, I, th I think it's normal to want to belong in our human condition. I think we all want to belong to something, some place, or with someone. I think it's a natural human tendency. Well, one of the big gurus out there that I love on explaining belonging is author, speaker, and researcher Brene Brown. Yes, a lot of you know her. So I have to share with you a quick little, you know, honoring that divine idea and um, divine timing and divine order, how all this unfolded. I had seen one of her books that I was interested in that piqued my interest, so I ordered the book. Now, I hadn't taken a peek at the book yet before this lesson was coming into being. And so I share this with you just to, so you can see how all these types of things will unfold, right, and to pay attention to them. But when I ordered that book about three weeks ago, like I said, I had no idea what this week's lesson was going to be about at this point in time. But there it was as I started to flip through the book afterwards in chapter two, The Quest for True Belonging. <laughs> not to mention a subtitle that I had not noticed before purchasing the book, The Quest for True Belonging and the Courage to Stand Alone. The actual name of the book is Braving the Wilderness. And it's not one of her newest books, but it's one I hadn't seen yet. So you can see how spirit works all the time, right? That's why I share that with you. But Brene's definition of true belonging actually came from her one of her earlier books called Gifts of Imperfection. But she shared the definition once again in this book. And it says this, Belonging is the innate human desire to be part of something larger than us. Because this yearning is so primal, we often try to acquire it by fitting in, by seeking approval, which are not only hollow substitutes for belonging, but often are barriers to it. Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging, here it comes, our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. And as I read that, I thought, what are we hiding from? <laughs> what, are 
What are we hiding from? Created in the image and likeness of God, what are we hiding from? Magnificent Christed beings, what are we hiding from? We're going to get to it. True belonging is belonging to ourselves. That's where all that self-acceptance comes in. Belonging to ourselves means being called to stand alone, to brave the wilderness of uncertainty, vulnerability, and criticism. <sighs> we don't like that, do we? Who wants, who wants to have criticism? Nope. This is still Brene speaking now. And with the world feeling like a political and ideolog ideological combat zone, this is remarkably tough. We seem to have forgotten that even when we are utterly alone, we are connected to one another by something greater than group membership, politics, and ideolo ideology. That we are connected by love and the human spirit. No matter how separated we are by what we think and believe, we are part of the same spiritual story. <sighs> she told it like it was, didn't she? That's what I thought. Okay, here comes my part. I thought to myself, here lies one of the greatest gifts. The moment that we accept ourselves and belong to ourselves and let ourselves off the hook for not being perfect, for not getting it right, not to mention who knows what right is, right? <laughs> we are able then to know the truth about ourselves. We get to take all of those 12 powers that we've been talking about all year and will continue through to the end of this year and live from that place. Know, know that that's really who we are. And yet, yes, of course, we are children of God, created in the image and likeness of God, that God, that one presence and power that's active in our lives all the time. God, the good that says that we are inherently good. And we come here every Sunday to keep remembering, right? <laughs> and I say, yes, that we're children. Because what did I think about that when I said children of God? Because what's happening with children? We'll s we're still maturing, aren't we? We're still growing. We're still learning. We're still on that upward spiral of our spiritual evolution. And we're magnificent. Oh, I'm just going to ask you to say it with me. Just say, we're ma I am magnificent. Will you say that with me? I am magnificent. Oh, you guys had some good energy. Good job. <laughs> but how does that feel? How does that feel when we can come from that place in our thinking? When we can have compassion. Think about that word with me. Compassion. Compassion for yourself. Compassion for others. When we can have empathy, less judgment. In those places, compassion, empathy, less judgment, there, my friends, is the middle. It's not right. There's not wrong. Now, we've widened our circle. Do you think that the practice of the middle way could be world-changing, life-changing, day-changing, moment-changing? I say yes. I say yes. Do you think that being in that place could have the potential to change some of these things that we're seeing every time we either just barely turn on the TV and I watch a minimal amount, that's just my personal choice. And some of the other things that are going on in the world. Where we just apply generous amounts of compassion, empathy, and less judgment. But here's what I know that I know that I know. Let it begin with me. Let it begin with us. If I do not start here, I cannot share it out here. 
We can practice by being open to one another, to no longer being afraid to be uniquely us. And I put on here, warts and all, as they say. (laughs) I don't know where that saying came from, but warts and all. But in truth, my friends, are they warts? Are they warts? Or can they just be a calling for a little more healing and a little more spiritual maturity? A little place where we could sweep away an error of belief that no longer fits? To step up a little bit higher? To move over from right and wrong, come back to that middle and step a little bit closer into the alignment of the truth of all of who we are? to own and know our spiritual identity as the Christ lights that each and every one of us have said yes to being? Because we have. We said yes to it. That's why we're here. Breathe. Everybody's like, (gasps) breathe with me. (sighs) Okay, I'm going to take it easy on you now. Here is a cherished treasure full of truth that we all know and we're going to be reminded of again. All I really needed to know, I learned in kindergarten. (laughs) Robert Fulgham. All I really needed to know, I learned in kindergarten. All I really needed to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the sand pile at Sunday school. These are the things I learned. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. (laughs) Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn some, think some, and draw some, paint some, sing some, and dance some, and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. When you go out into the world, watch out for traffic. Hold hands and stick together. Be aware of wonder. Remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup? The roots go down and the plant goes up. And nobody really knows how or why, but we are all like that. Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die. And so do we. And then remember the Dick and Jane books and the first word you learn, the biggest word of all, look. (laughs) Everything you need to know is in there somewhere, the golden rule and love and basic sanitation, ecology and politics and equality and sane living. Take any of those items and extrapolate into your sophisticated adult terms and apply it to your family life, or your work, or your government, or your world, and it holds true and clear and firm. Think what a better world it would be if all the whole world had cookies and milk about 3 o'clock every afternoon, and then lay down with our blankies for a nap. (laughs) We could stay out of trouble that way, couldn't we? (laughs) Or if all governments had a basic policy to always put things back where they found them and to clean up their own messes. (laughs) And it is still true. No matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. (laughs) Thank you, Robert, right? Dear friends, I believe that in kindergarten, 
we instinctively knew how to be in that middle place relatively quickly. Would you agree with me? And that we had a true sense of belonging. I invite us this day, let us widen our circle of compassion. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. In everything. And at the end of our lives, dear ones, I believe with my whole heart that the only thing that truly matters is how much we loved. Nothing else is important. And perhaps as you fall asleep this evening, I invite you to ask yourself, how much did I love today? Was I able to widen my circle just a little bit? Could I find myself a little bit closer to that middle way? How much did I love myself today? How much did I love others? We are better together. Say it with me. We are better together. We belong to one another. Say that with me. We belong to one another. That is the truth, dear ones. And so it is. Now, this morning, we have a special time in our service. It's a membership service now. So I invite you to join me as we create an energy of belonging and community here at Unity of Daytona Beach. Yes? Let's do it. Put it on out there. <laughs> so we do indeed this morning have the pleasure of welcoming an individual who has recently chosen to become a member at Unity of Daytona Beach. Membership is open to everyone who desires to know God more and is willing to study and live to the best of their ability the spiritual principles taught and practiced by Jesus Christ. Charles Fillmore taught, I love this teaching, there can be but one leader for a person in the search of God, the spirit within. Unity members are encouraged to live in according to the guidance and instruction of their own indwelling Christ spirit without pressures of dogma or ecclesiastical dis dictates. Our church exists to provide a place where we minister to each other while pursuing our own individual spiritual growth. We bless and support each other in an atmosphere of love, cooperation, and mutual respect. Our goal is ongoing personal transformation, which translates to ongoing transformation of our spiritual community and ultimately our world. The choice to become a member of Unity of Daytona Beach then is an act of commitment to self, to all other members and friends of this community, and also to the expansion of good in the world. I'm proud to be a member of this community. Friends, this is your church, your spiritual home, a place of peace and joy where you know you are loved and welcomed, a place where you belong. You are encouraged to be intimately involved with it, to be an enthusiastic participant. You are asked to consistently pray for your church community and to the best of your ability to generously give of your time, talent, and financial support. You are an important part of this community. You have special gifts to share which can be given by no one else but you. Jesus taught, you are the light of the world and you are also one of the bright lights of this community. In just a few moments, I'm going to invite you to come forward to receive your membership certificate in a rose. The certificate documents your commitment that you stated here today. The rose is given as a symbol of your beautiful, unfolding spiritual nature. It is also a reminder to all of us to be gentle with each other as we unfold and mature in our spiritual development. The roses still have their thorns, but if handled gently, the thorns will cause no injury. In the process of unfolding within our church community, no doubt, we will discover that we all have at least a few thorns. Let us gently handle them, our own and those of others. Then there is no injury, 
and we are free to enjoy the beauty of each other's blooming Christ nature. As the minister of Unity of Daytona Beach, it is my joy on behalf of the Board of Trustees and this congregation to welcome you into full and active membership in this spiritual community. Gary, please come forward. Gary Broman. Please join me now in blessing our new member. So I'm going to invite you all to speak this with me. Hopefully you can see that. The light of Christ shines forth from you. Our light shines brighter through your presence here. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We welcome you into our hearts and this spiritual community. We thank God for you. You just stand. I'm going to ask you just to stay for one second. We're just going to say a quick prayer. There we go. Take a breath with me. And close your eyes and just join me in a prayer. Do you go anywhere, Gary? <laughs> This is for you. <laughs> oh, Mother, Father, God, we bless Gary, who has come into a greater awareness of your love and who has made the decision to enhance his spiritual growth by, become a mem by becoming a member of this church. We see this dear one belonging here in this circle, in this family. We affirm that he is filled with faith, guided by infinite wisdom, and prospered by divine love, fully supported from your love and your goodness, growing in strength and grace. We give thanks for this new member and for, his spirit, for this spiritual community known as Unity of Daytona Beach, where we gather with each other in the spirit of love and in service to the Christ. We pray these things in faith, believing that they are done, and so it is. Amen. Once again, Gary, we welcome you. Thank you all. God bless you. I can feel it, I can feel it, oh your presence, oh your presence, I can feel it, I can feel it, oh your presence. Oh, your presence, it is great, it is good, it is perfect. Oh, your presence, oh, your presence, it is great, it is good, it is holy. Oh, your presence, oh, your presence, I can feel it, I can feel it, oh, your mercy, oh, your mercy, it is great, it is good, it is perfect. Oh, your mercy, oh, your mercy, 
It is great, it is good, it is holy. Of your mercy, of your mercy. And I know in my body you reside. And I know. I am breathing in your life And I know I am seeing through your eyes And I know that your heart is beating mine I can feel it I can feel it of your love, of your love, I can feel it, I can feel it, of your love, of your love, of your love. Of your love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We enjoyed that special treat. It is that time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our gifts and our ties. So in whatever way you've already been doing that, where you're giving online or you've placed it in the basket, we honor all of that. And so join me as we pray one more time. Oops, I'm sorry. Join me in our affirmation of abundance. <laughs> and it's a prayer, right? Yes, yes it is. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And it is so. So let's just bless this one more time. Just take a breath in with me. Close your eyes for just a moment. Whoo, again, thank you, God. We gratefully receive these gifts with enthusiasm and expectancy of good. We send these gifts right back out into this world to create more of God's love and action, more of God's good here on planet Earth. We honor each and every prayer request in our prayer box, knowing all prayers are answered. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And if you'll join me, please, in our prayer for protection. Put a little enthusiasm and some energy into it with me, will you? Yes. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. Amen. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God, our Creator, we are family. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, 